So over here, I have this track called Random. It has, it's an instrument rack with a drum rack and an arpeggiator and a random MIDI effect from the MIDI effects tab in the browser. And so the arpeggiator, if we just hit one note and hold it with the arpeggiator active, the arpeggiator is going to start working and doing its syncopated stylings. And so this is what this sounds like without the random. So I've got one held note on the very bottom, uh, very bottom pad. And so I set this drum rack up differently than the last step that I've, that I've shown. And so the way that this one is set up is there's not drum rack multi, multi options. There's only one sample per pad. Okay. And so the one sample per pad, this held note is on this. And the arpeggiator with the swing groove set up and the rate 1 16th, it's giving us that, uh, that repetitive movement. And I can slow the speed down with the speed macro knob. Remember this drum rack is included with really, really good drum fills. And so the random MIDI effect, what it does is it randomizes which, which MIDI note is hit. And as you can see, when we open up the MIDI clip that each of these pads in the drum rack is actually assigned to. So that's pretty fun and uh, can let us get some totally random and kind of quirky drum fill combinations. And so in the, in the instrument rack here, I have this Titan knob. And if I open that up, it just plays the full sustain of the kick or the drum hits. And if I bring that down, check it out. It shortens the sustain and decay. And so there's a random knob and it's the random macro is connected to the, to the chance function and the MIDI effect random. And so if I have this all the way down, it's just going to be one note. And if I turn this all the way up, it's going to fully random, not randomize which MIDI note is selected. So these are, these can make really great drum fills at the, at the tail end of a phrase or something like that to transition in to the next phrase of the chorus or however your music is sequenced. So great transitional effects. They're kind of fun, random, and a little bit less humanized, a little bit more digital, but not in a sort of destructive way, more of in like a creative and innovative way. And so I'm going to build this from scratch again, just like the last and show you how it's done. And so I'm going to create a, a brand new MIDI track and I'm going to put a MIDI clip on it that is, uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'll cross that bridge when I get there actually. And so the next step is I'm going to slap on a drum rack. And so I'm going to go back into really, really good drum fills. And in this instance, I'm going to actually select every single one shot that's included in the pack. And I'm going to drop and drag that on C1, the very first pad. And it's going to sequentially place them on each following pad. And so now there's a drum, uh, all the drum pads are filled for these for from C1 all the way up to A7. So quite a few drum hits. Great. Okay. So the next step is I'm going to throw on an arpeggiator. And so I'm going to find that in my MIDI effects and I'm going to slap that on this new MIDI track. And the next one is the random. And so that's important. Get that arpeggiator on there. Not sure what happened there. Sweet. Okay, so now I'm gonna put that sustained note on the very first pad, kick one, just as I expected. So I'm gonna turn up the rate on the arpeggiator. And I'm gonna to go to this groove tab here and select swing 16. Okay, and so the, on the random MIDI effect, I'm gonna turn up the chance. Fun. So 
the next step is I'm going to actually put all of these in, our, in a group in an instrument rack. So I've selected all the devices and I've hit Command-G on my Mac. It's probably Control-G for a PC. I'm going to open up my Macro tab here and this is how I shall assign these types of things. And so I'm going to right click Map to Macro 1. That's going to be the rate. And uh, I also want to sync up the gate. And so that's going to go to Macro 2. And I want to sync up the groove that's going to go to macro three. So now macro three is going to control my little groove drop down box there. And uh, macro four is going to be the chance knob on the random machine. So I'm going to, I'm going to, what, what I did do in that, uh, in the original drum rack is the chance I renamed to random and the groove can stay as groove and uh, the gate I renamed as Titan tighten it up and so this could just be rate and so I like to dial it in a little bit more so I'm gonna hit this map key and go looking in my browser over here I don't need uh, arpeggiator rate of 1 to 1 to 128 so I'm gonna change this up here so I'm gonna have it set so that the minimum which means the macro knob turned all the way down is one one and one one fourth and I'm gonna have the max turned up to 116 which will now mean that when the rate macro knob is all the way down it's one fourth and when it's all the way turned up it's only one sixteenth so i'm closing the gap of uh of the range of possibility there in a way that helps me have some, uh, more easeful control So very fun drum fills and uh, done easily. So once we create these racks and instruments, you know, if I, w I we can use them over and over again and just drop them, drag into our, our, into our projects, or we could go this road. And if I wanted to, I could just isolate these different four possible fills here and put and render them to audio and put them in a, in um, some type of folder of my choosing. So yes, there we go. Two quick ways to create dynamite drum fills quickly in Ableton. Ciao.